students, it's Shayna from EspressoEnglish.net and today I want to answer a question from a student who asked about English phrases we can use for talking about making mistakes and then promising to resolve or fix those mistakes. So before we start, I want to remind you that with the word mistake, we use the verb make, not do. So always say, I made a mistake, and don't say, I did a mistake. Okay? Simple. You can remember it because it's an M for make and an M for mistake. I made a mistake. Got it? All right, let's learn some of these phrases. So if you make a mistake, you don't always want to be repeating the same phrase, I made a mistake. So here are some other phrases that native English speakers use. One informal phrase is this one, I messed up, I messed up. This is informal and so we use it usually when talking with friends or family members. So for example, if you're inviting everybody to a party and the party is on Saturday but you sent out 50 emails saying the party was on Sunday by mistake, then you could say, ah, oh, I messed up. I told everyone the party is on Sunday, but it should be on Saturday, okay? If you want to emphasize that you made a really big mistake, then you can add the word really in here. So you can say, I really messed up. Or another way is, I messed up really bad or really badly. So if I'm washing the clothes for my entire family, and I make the mistake of adding bleach. Bleach is a chemical that makes things white. So if I accidentally add bleach when washing the clothes and I ruin everybody's clothes, so all the colors are gone, all the clothes now have white spots, then I could say, oh man, I messed up really bad when I added bleach to the laundry. Okay, so mess up is an informal way to talk about making mistakes. We also have this expression, I dropped the ball. And this comes from baseball where the players need to catch the ball and if they drop the ball then it's a mistake, it's an error. And we usually use I dropped the ball when there's some task or responsibility that you were supposed to do and you didn't do it. So for example, if you're at work and you need to call an important client by the end of the day and you don't do it and then your boss asks you how was the phone call then you could say I'm so sorry I dropped the ball and I didn't call that client okay or if there's a group project at school and you need to write uh, one page for the project and all of the other group members are asking you hey where is your text and you didn't write it, then you could say, ah, I dropped the ball, meaning I didn't do the task I was responsible for. We also have, it was my fault. And this phrase is used when you take responsibility that you were the one who made the mistake or caused the problem. So if, um, let's say you're at work and you try to use the office printer to print a really big document and the paper gets jammed in the printer and everyone's trying to figure out who did this, you could say, I'm sorry, it was my fault. So this is just a general phrase that can be used at work or outside of work for taking responsibility. When there are many people involved but you are saying it was my fault, I'm the one who made the mistake or caused the problem. All right, so now let's learn some phrases. After you have admitted your mistake, what can you say after that? You can say, I'm sorry, or sorry about that, but there are some other phrases you can use as well. So a good one to use at work is this, it won't happen again. So if your boss finds out you made a mistake, you dropped the ball, and you want to promise your boss that you're going to be more careful in the future, then you can say this, it won't happen again. This just shows that you are very determined to improve your work, improve your behavior, 
and you are promising that you will do better in the future and saying that the mistake or the problem won't happen again. Another very common phrase we use is I'll and then we say what we're going to do to fix the problem right away. So you can say I'll fix it right away or I'll resolve this right away. In the example I gave earlier when there was an important client that you didn't call, you could say I'll call the client right away. Right away means immediately or very soon in the future. So this phrase shows that you are going to take action to resolve the problem immediately. All right. So this can make other people feel better because you admitted you made a mistake, but now you're taking action to resolve the problem. And uh, if you really want to show that you are going to invest a lot of effort in fixing this problem, you can use this expression. I'll do everything in my power to resolve the problem. I'll do everything in my power to make the client happy. Okay, so this is just a way to give extra emphasis to the fact that you are going to do everything, make many efforts to fix this problem, to make things right, and to make up for or compensate for your mistake. Okay? Um, another expression you can use, let's say that you have a problem between you and your friend. For example, you promised to give your friend a ride somewhere and you forgot, you didn't do it, and you can, you're not sure what you can do to fix it, the relationship between you and your friend, you can ask the question, how can I make it up to you? Or what can I do to make it up to you? This is asking, what can I do to compensate for this problem or to repair the damage I've caused to our relationship? So that's a good one to use between friends when you've made a mistake, you've caused a problem, but you want to make things better. You can ask the person, what can I do to make it up for, sorry. You can ask the person, what can I do to make it up to you? That means compensate you for this problem I have caused. All right, so I hope this gives you a better idea of some phrases you can use for making mistakes and then making up for the mistakes or promising that the mistakes will be fixed or um, compensated for. And I'd like to help you improve your English even further so that you don't make many mistakes when you talk. So if you'd like to keep studying with me, then please check out my courses. There's a link in this video. And I've got courses on many areas of the language from business English to vocabulary, speaking, listening, and much more. So click on the link, read about my courses, and I hope to see you inside. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.